but I'm going to put in the correct answer, which is 6 times 9 in base 13. Let's take a look at some code. I'm going to create a variable called meaning of life that has no value. And if meaning of life does have a value, I'm going to console log the meaning of life, the universe and everything is whatever the value is in the meaning of life variable. Uh, if there isn't a value in meaning of life, I will console log. I have no idea. Yeah, fine. Why not? So if I run this code right now, meaning of life doesn't have a value. So we should just get I have no idea. So let's see. There we go. I have no idea. And if we actually assign a value to meaning of life here, we should see the first statement printed out. This one right here. The meaning of life is uh, 42 in this case. And there we go. And this code should look pretty normal to any JavaScript developer, but it's kind of weird code if you think about it, because what does if meaning of life even mean? If we think about if statements for a minute, we know they're logically supposed to work with Boolean values. So if I had something in here like six is less than nine, this is an expression that will evaluate to true because six is less than nine. So if this is true, then run some code, in this case a console log, otherwise do something else. And we think about if statements in this way, if this, then that. And if I flipped this right here, it would evaluate to false. So this won't get executed and the else statement with. And it's really easy to think about and logic about because this evaluates, this expression evaluates to a Boolean value. And if statements are supposed to work with true or false. But when I put meaning of life in here, this is the value 42. It's a number, it isn't true, it isn't false, it is just 42. So how is the if statement working with a value that isn't true or false? And why is it just assuming that 42 is true? Well, that's because every single value in JavaScript is either truthy or falsy. Meaning if we evaluate a value in a Boolean context, like in an if statement here, it will evaluate to either true or false. So when we evaluate 42 in a Boolean context, it is evaluating to true. And we can see this if we open up a node REPL here uh, and we use the Boolean function, we can pass in any value and see if it will evaluate to true or false in a Boolean context. So 42 is a truthy value, so it evaluates to true. And we can put any value in here. So I'll put the string 42 and that will evaluate to true. I can put in a plain old function in here, literally any value that will evaluate to true. Uh, I could put in the value true, that is truthy, so that will evaluate to true. So all of these values here are all truthy values and will evaluate to true in a Boolean context. So if we put any of these values in this part of the if statement right here, it would treat it as true and run this block of code. But which values would evaluate to false? Which values are falsy values in JavaScript? And this is more interesting because there are only eight falsy values in JavaScript. So false is the first one. False will evaluate to false. Uh, we have an empty string. We have nan, both undefined and a lot of boolean null are both falsy how many do i have there one two three four five okay um let me go off the top of my head here let's see the uh big integer zero is falsy and zero is falsy and negative zero is falsy let's see one two three four five six seven eight that's eight values these are the only values in javascript that are falsy and will evaluate to false in a boolean context and zero and negative zero are actually different values i'm just going to go on a quick tangent here because if you use triple equals to check if these are different values triple equals is incorrect and tells you that they are the same value so triple equals is wrong because zero and negative zero are different. But if you divide something by zero, you get infinity. And if you divide something by negative zero, 
you get negative infinity and these will equate to different values. Or you could actually check for equality correctly by using object.is, pass in zero and negative zero, and this will tell you that they are not actually the same thing. Anyway, so back to the if statement. If I have a falsy value here, like an empty string or zero or false or null or undefined or none or any of those eight values, this part of the if statement won't be run, it will go to the else statement. So if we try this out, given an empty string, it will say I have no idea because it evaluated to false. And this can be a little bit confusing at times because potentially we would want to allow an empty string or maybe the value zero to be a valid value here. Maybe I want to say the meaning of life is zero and that's fine. So I want to treat this as a value, like the number zero. I don't want this to evaluate to false. So using my if statement like this won't work because zero is falsy, so it will just go to the else statement. So in cases like this, to not get caught off guard, you need to check for the non-existence of a value, which means checking for both null or undefined, because both null and undefined represent the absence of a value, not falsy values, just the value doesn't exist. Uh, and then I would flip these here. So if it is null or undefined, a value has not been set, I'm going to console log, I have no idea. But if there is a value, even if it's a falsy value, I still want to console log the meaning of life. So I can go back here and run this. And this time I'm actually allowed to use the value zero as the meaning of life, or I could use an empty string or nan or any of the other falsy values other than null or undefined. And I could leave this value as zero here, but I'm going to put in the correct answer, which is six times nine in base 13 which is 42. And one more thing I should note about this checking for null and undefined is that we can actually make this a little bit shorter by only using double equals because double equals will check for nullish values instead of checking for null. And that is the second time that I've on triple equals in this video, so make sure you leave a comment if I've upset you. And while you're at it, make sure you're subscribed to this channel and consider joining the channel membership so that your comment stands out a little bit nicer with a channel membership badge. So moving on, let's talk about the bang or not operator, which is the exclamation mark. And what this does is flips a Boolean value. So true becomes false and false becomes true. But it doesn't just flip the Boolean value, it actually converts any value to a Boolean and then flips it. So if we put this in front of a truthy value, it becomes false. And if we put this in front of a falsy value, it becomes true. So if I go back to the original code I had here, which was just checking for a truthy value. So if meaning of life is truthy, then log out the meaning of life. Otherwise, log out, I have no idea. If I wanted to inverse this, I could just put an exclamation mark here, which basically reads as if not meaning of life. So now we're checking to see if it's a falsy value, then do the falsy thing. And if it's a truthy value, do the truthy thing. So this just flips around what's going on. And I actually have another video on avoiding else statements using this technique. So I'll link to that in description if you wanna check it out. Then there's the double exclamation mark, which is just putting two exclamation marks together, which flips things twice. And what this does is it turns a truthy value or true into true and a falsy value or false into false. So if I use double exclamation mark in front of any value, I will be able to see if it's truthy or falsy, what it evaluates to. And this is the exact equivalent of using the Boolean function on a value. It's just a shorter way of checking if it's truthy or falsy. And this is pretty much useless because an if statement will already evaluate this as a Boolean and it will just be like the original code, but with two extra exclamation marks now. But people do like to use this sometimes. So you should be aware that it is just evaluating a value as either true or false based on if it's a truthy or falsy value. And it does appear in the Airbnb style guide in a few places, like right here. I think it's two different places in this style guide. It's here and here. So I guess if you're one of the people that works at Airbnb, you should understand double exclamation mark and hopefully you've watched this video.